God, Andre Hutner said in the wrong conversation. So. <laughs> Simmer. Yes, to be named the most outstanding UWI alumni across all three campuses for the decade 99 to 2008 is a huge deal. Surprisingly so enough, uh, Dr. Andre Houghton, he's not sure. He's an economist and lecturer, and senior that. lecturer. I know when you're born is when you went to school. I know so I'm I saying you're so young. I didn't okay. know you were even born in <laughs> Well, he recently received the award, and this morning he's going to share with us what his journey has been like from starting from his days uh, in Montego Bay. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Good morning to you um, too. I asked you how you felt, and you said. I don't really have much feelings, like positive or negative. It's really. Is that economy sinner? Yeah? No, no, no. You're positive or negative. All right. All right. I was selected as the most outstanding UWI student um, yeah. across all three campuses for the time period 1999 to 2008 mm -hmm. because I went to school in uh, UWI 2000 to 2005. I was a very active student, I was very excellent at whatever I did. But more importantly, I received this award for the impact of my research on the, the Caribbean, Jamaica, and more importantly, the world. In 2007, I was given a distinguished academic fellowship by the International Monetary Fund wow. because of the, the work I've been doing in, on interest rates, exchange rates, prices, and so on. And I, I, I don't want to uh, look at the, the research from my own personal point of view. It is looking at the impact the research has been having on global development. Now, whilst I was doing my PhD, I realized that a lot of countries, when their central banks move their interest rates, the commercial banks were supposed to follow suit by passing on the benefits to consumers. But what we realized is that a lot of these small developing countries, the, the, the commercial banks were herding those benefits for themselves. Mm. But what my research did, my research highlighted this that issue and, this. And, and also looked at it from, to say that the movement is asymmetric. That is, whenever there is upward movements in the interest rate, the central bank transfer all the costs, but they do not transfer the downward movement, which is the benefit. Mm. And this is how economies grow, because economies grow through the movement of money mm -hmm. from one end to the next, and these monies that lead to increase in investments. So, Across the, the globe, uh, even the IMF, or most of the research that they do are on developed countries like the G7 and the G10. And then they use recommendations from this to tell smaller countries what, what to, to do. do right. But my research says, no, no, we have small countries' idiosyncrasies, mm -hmm. that small specific no things. Here, to, yeah. So we have to pay closer attention to how these transmission mechanisms function in these smaller countries. So I, I, I highlighted these issues, and they had... They, the they, PhD, by the way, you did in three years, right? Yeah, basically, so you were in the, the UK. You were, you were the fastest... Yeah, PhD. I graduated uh, before the others in my so cohort. So people take up to ten years. You took, yeah, you took three, because you had other things to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When I was leaving the UK... He's on that. the phone. He's on the phone. When I, when I was leaving, when I was leaving the UK... <laughs> When I was leaving the UK, they didn't want me to leave. They wanted me to stay. As a matter of fact, my examiner, he's, he was from Oxford, and he was very interested in the sort of research that I was doing, and he wanted me to stay. But we were coming out of a global financial crisis. Uh, you know, it was 2008 to 2009 going up. And I realized that the Jamaican economy, as, as a Jamaican, I had a solemn duty to mm -hmm. my people to come home to say, okay, this is the scenario, these are the issues that we have to highlight, and then this is how we should move forward. I began writing in the Jamaica Gleaner, and I, they, they gave me a column for myself to simplify and explain things that, that, that affect us in, 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 in particular ways. And this was very instrumental in communicating with the masses the things that they need to know. Andre, oh, you reached there, sir. May, I'm looking at you. Can we see the picture? Um, so you sound like a young man out of Mount Salem. You know, look there. Oh, oh God. Stop it. Yeah, when I say my mother dressed me neat to go to school. Oh, gosh. I'm a lunch pan, I'm a particular. I'm from a long time. I'm the economic oh. stuff. Things that I'm yeah, man, not yeah, a I'm a particular man. man. <laughs> so that's, that's, in, that's in Mount Salem. That's Party. where I'm from. I still have a yard there, and I'm still rise it, I'm going to see it. You still you know? have the what? I'm still living at a yard there, I'm still rise oh, it, I'm going to see it. You were saying you still have the Oh, it's not changed, not, not, not changed. So, so, yeah, so I want to get back to um, humble beginnings, because, because I 
I like to, because there are a lot of Jamaican youth who a lot of times feel like where I'm from mean I can't I can't reach there. Yeah. What would a mentally said to Andre, oh, this, this I can, and this is where I'm heading. You get to realize that both from the, 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 the infrastructure and the superstructure, we, we pay less attention to the talent we have and we pay more attention to importing talent while we're exporting our indigenous talent. The, the, last night I was having a conversation with an elder Rasta man, mm. and he was saying, um, I don't believe in education, I don't like, like see the, the, the relevance of education. Look at Bob Marley, he's the best, he's the most important Jamaican, and he doesn't have any education. So I said to him, why do you buy German-made cars? You buy German-made cars because you think they're efficient, they come with a level of efficiency and a level of production that speaks to what, where you would like to be. And that is the case. It's because we live in this slavery type economy, we put too much emphasis on just music and sports. And black people are always seen as entertainers, even though we are and have been great architects in many facets across the in world. Painters, you understand yeah. what I'm saying? So if, as a Jamaican, we look at ourselves and we take pride in ourselves, I would tell everyone to come home. We have to build ourselves. Look at what Donald Trump is doing in the United States. He's asking the Americans to come home. The Russians are asking the Russians to come home. Right now, we can't just be gratified by the salary that we receive. Okay, I move to America, I leave my salary triple. But what is it for the people? How do I contribute to moving a, a nation of people forward? And it has to come through research. It has to come and through interconnect. Remittances is a money the same way, man. Jamaican people not short of money. Jamaican people shout off and know how of what to do with the money. Mm. You understand what I'm mm. saying? So that is where we oh, come in works. with a global understanding of international finance <laughs> and how money moves <laughs> across money business works. and across borders. And I had to study money because of the mere fact that people place too much emphasis on it as a numerator. You understand what I'm saying? Without placing emphasis on the abilities they have, placing emphasis on how what they do will not only contribute to the development of their communities, but also contribute to the development of their countries and, and the world in general. You speak of abilities. You, you easily could have been a baller. You, you didn't have to go this way because you were good at football. Yeah, I could play football. Why, why did you end up in Nipana? Your mom was not having Because, me. yeah, that for <laughs> one, um, they like, you know, parents don't really like the idea of you playing football and if you say son for bright, you know what I mean? Somebody just take it up on me and say, you know, some of like bright pitney. Some of us study hard and try to please her still. Because the, she's the person who I do everything for. Hmm. You understand what I mean? Because she has been there for me throughout thick times when other people neglect me. They don't know the value of me. You understand what I mean? So you tell them, say, I want the academics. They have no business with that. They want to go look work. You get me? I say, but looking at what is our work? What is our work? How can our work contribute to the development of the nation and development of the region. Mm -hmm. You have to find yourself in a facet where you were given this ability to understand this part of economics easier than most people. You have to use this. You can't be selfish. So it's not about the money or about me receiving an award. It's about how can I get Jamaica to understand that where we are now as a people is not where we should be. And where we are today is nowhere near where we can be in the future if we apply ourselves po positively and sensibly. It's an interesting thing, Andre, because people keep talking about the UWI <laughs> and the relevance of the UWI and you are up there, son, where you are yeah. do. And I, and I often say such great research comes mm -hmm. out of the UWI, mm -hmm. but, but, but we yeah. don't often move the research information into practice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is that a challenge for us? Yeah, that has been a challenge, and that is one thing that my colleagues have commended me for, because breaking down complex economic theories and economic occurrences into simple layman terms, such as, as what I do with the briefing, is not very easy to do. Mm. I mean, the average academic, they write or contribute at 70, uh, Gleaner, I'm not talking about journal articles, Gleaner articles on average. I'm, I'm gone way past that, close to 300 now. And I'm, and I'm quarter of their particular um, career. So the UWI as an entity, because the research we do is so complex in different assets, in life sciences, in medicine, in law, in economics, and so on and so forth, it's very difficult for you to explain this to a group of people who don't value education and knowledge. Mm -hmm. So 
What we have to do is that on a collective level, we have to value education, we have to value knowledge, and we have to value the importance of this toward developing the economy. Mm -hmm. We can't just be thinking about being a businessman and we buy and sell. And this is why the economy is where it is, because we are taking a backward approach. We are mainly merchants. So we import to distribute instead of trying to grow what we have indigenously, including the ability of our people. Yeah. So... What next? I know you're into mentorship as well. Valley yeah, Foundation we, yeah, still we do. exists. Yeah, Valley Foundation still exists. We go to a lot of schools. I do a lot of work as well in Mount Salem where I'm from with the, the people who are there. We try as best as possible to uh, make the young people understand the importance of education and the importance of knowledge. We got Garth and, and Miss Barnes um, in Mount Salem who are on the ground with the Peace Management Initiative as well, doing a lot of work with the people there. But fundamentally, Jamaica has a great ro role to play in, in the global economy. It's not just about giving them the music we have or giving them the, the sports we have. It's about helping them to realize that as a small nation, we can find the efficiency that we need so that everyone, we don't have to use intimidating statics to, to control young people. We can control them their own minds by helping them to become more productive over time. Mm. Wonderful. And it's necessary. Wonderful. It's very necessary. One day we have a drink out of that. You know, Appleton gave him his own. I saw yeah. room. Yeah. You got your own room. I didn't yeah, bring okay. any for us this morning. No, no, I drink it. I'll pass it on to my children. My children's children. My children's children. Children, children, children. That's it. Children. It's children. just, it's the, the one reward there is for hard work is more work. More work. More work. What's your mom's name? What's your mommy's name? Jasmine. Beverly Somerville. That's her oh, name. Oh, gosh. Bless your mommy. You must be so proud of this, this young man. Very special young man. I know every time... Um, Deion Jackson will have economic things to break down. Check out Andre. Yeah, because <laughs> he just breaks it right down for you so you can understand it. All the best. More success, more Rome. More, more success <laughs> for the country. It's yes. like, where do we see ourselves 25 years from now? They are mm. building hotels on space. We are still focusing on creating all-inclusive hotels only. I mean, in the same light that a tourist want to come to Jamaica and stay in an all-inclusive, a tourist want to come to Mount Salem and enjoy mm. the, the, the indigenous life. Mm. So, so we have to try to help our people understand that sometimes crime is bad for business. And the mafia understood this. They understood this very well. And that is why they were able to become so successful, because they, have, they had the ability to do crime. But they left the crime, criminal activity to the mob. And them, as the mafia, deal with the business. And I saw Jamaica should look at itself. We let us focus on the business. So even if we're not violent, everybody know we're bad. The whole world try to emulate we in a badness too. But at the same time, badness not really pay. You understand what I mean? Because we can earn more on a collective level if we understand how the economy functions. That's right, sir. We have to go. Right. We need to talk some more. We'll bring yeah, you back definitely. It's always a pleasure time. coming here to talk to you guys. Yes, sir. Economist and lecturer, doctor, please call him. Andre Hutton. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if Andre is one of them money we're going to talk about in a girl talk. I don't know. <laughs> it's stick around, viewers, and then we hear about it.